overcome you, will change your story, will elevate your brand, will break for your dreams. Welcome to Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance. Join us as we build saints to become voices, visionaries, and vessels of God's kingdom. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Ah, Lord, we thank you. There's a glorious, glorious move of the Spirit in this house. And such a holy recalibration of hearts. And we honor the Lord for it. My brother, Minister David, would you help me, sir? What a precious blessing <laughs> to do this with Minister David in Keno. He's a very dearly beloved brother who's standing with us in the work of ministry. We're going to be together again next week by the grace of God at Heavenly Portals meeting. Can you honor and give God thanks for him? We're just going to spend a few minutes uh, and just worship the Lord Jesus Christ and just honor the Christ this precious day we thank him we submitted to him we yielded to him we are devoted to him we follow him we delight ourselves in him we prefer him we want to be like him we're looking unto him we release and yield ourselves to him we bear his burdens and we carry his cross Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. No shadow he won't light up. Because his love is reaching us to us today. As I sat over there, I didn't know how it would connect to what he had put in my heart. But he said very, very vividly to me to assure his people of his love. He said, my love is breaking barriers. My love is reaching beyond the boundaries. My love is overtaking everyone. It's crossing the borders. You're going to be so deeply immersed in an overwhelming revelation of the Father's love. And I just want you to yield yourself in the next few minutes just to be assured and firmly established again in His love. Before I spoke yes. words, you were singing. Thank you, Lord. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night and I I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. Oh. I could 
shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming it's after coming me. After me. Yeah. There's no wall you won't tear down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. No There's no shadow. You won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. It's coming after me. There's no wall you won't keep down. His arm is advancing. Oh, we're advancing. His arm is advancing. Come in after me. We're advancing. At Hala Baragado. His arm is advancing. Chasing after me, you're chasing after me. Oh, chasing after me, chasing after me, chasing after me. Satella my nose. Chasing after me, 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 you're chasing after me. Let's do it one more time. He's chasing after me, chasing after me, chasing after me. Chasing after me, chasing after me, chasing after me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that your best people of God? Hallelujah. Sadala Basa, Triumphant Church. Hallelujah. Finishing generation. Hallelujah. While you're still standing. We're going to make a few declarations, and I'm just also counting on Pastor Chintok's generosity for a bit of time, maybe for another five, ten minutes to do this before getting right into um, the word. But we'll declare this together, and I trust the Lord to help you just go along as we establish his heart and raise a prophetic banner of his voice and his thoughts 
over this hour, this generation, over this land, over the body of Christ in Nigeria and across the nations of the earth. We know indeed that this is a legislative headquarters. This assembly is the assembly of Christ. And the things that we declare boldly under him by the spirit will speak and will resonate to the ends of the earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare over our generation that we will serve the Lord and we will finish his work. His praise will be heard over our generation. In our time, the glory of our King rises higher and his reign is stronger than the deceitfulness of riches, the government of sin, the sting of death, and the looming darkness. We see the nations and its peoples, every tribe, every tongue coming together in righteous accord, undivided and unbroken for the worship of our Lord Jesus Christ. We declare as God's holy army of the finish that we mature into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, fulfilling his perfect purposes. We become the manner of people for this manner of time. We become the manner of people for this manner of time. Our stature is stunning. Our stamina is strong. Our status is supernatural. We are the hundredfold saints. We are the hundredfold saints, the God-man, the undefiled bride, in the name of Jesus. We advance in adversity, we triumph in trials, we prosper in persecutions. Our army is stately, our formations are orderly, our king is at the head of this procession. Our king is at the head of this procession. Holy Father, we silence every voice of death over this generation. We receive the life-giving word of God to resound as truth and justice upon us and within us. We are sons of oil. We are sons of oil living in the light. We cannot be overtaken by the trickery of Satan. We are the ones manifesting the marvelous light of the gospel. We are the ones manifesting the marvelous light of the gospel. This light, our light, shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. We have seen the defeat of the fallen adversary. We insist on our blood-bought victory across every sphere, every system, and every sector of humanity. In the name of Jesus, worshipers are rising, forerunners are rising, intercessors are rising, apostles are rising, prophets are rising, pioneers are rising, vessels are rising, voices are rising, Visionaries are rising in our time for the will of God. From all the corners of the nations, as a witness to the ages and the work of Christ in the church, we declare ourselves as holy witnesses of his higher ways, as our hearts burn with irrepressible love, and passionate submission. We, the, we are the finishing generation who stand at the center point of God's move and movements. We declare, let this fire of revival burn till it burns out every chaff and refines our gold. We follow Christ. He is the wind beneath our wings. And we go where the rapids of eternal life take us. We go where the rapids of eternal life take us. We are the bride undefiled. 
We are the bride undefiled. We are the church of the glorified Christ. We are a people invincible, an army indefatigable, and we are citizens of the heavenly city. We are reapers of a holy heritage. We are the harvest and the harvesters. We are the harvest and the harvesters. We are saints of the divine order. Our gaze is steady and our gate is steadfast. Our gaze is steady and our gate is steadfast. We take the distant lands. We seize enemy camps. We mount guard over territories. We circle mountains into submission. We seize enemy territories. We take the distant lands. We mount guard over territories. We circle mountains into submission. We are with the host of heaven. We are hosting hostilities against the host of the enemy. No, you didn't hear me. I need to break that down to you. Hosting hostilities is a militia operation. It is to go undercover with a strategy that lays ambush against enemy camps by understanding their weaknesses. We are hosting hostilities. We are hosting hostilities. Believers have been civil for too long, but now we are hosting hostilities. We understand the limitations and the weaknesses in the strategies of Satan, and we are infiltrating systems. We are hosting hostilities. Say with me, we are with the hosts of heaven. And we are hosting hostilities against the host of the enemy. Is that your best? We are with the hosts of heaven. And we are hosting hostilities. You know, to be hostile, you understand hostility. Hallelujah. Do you understand hostility? That there's a dimension of your calling that un unlocks cruelty against the cruel darkness of the enemy. This is an army to be feared. We are taking nothing lying down. There's a violent dimension of your calling in Christ Jesus. Going forward, when you put your feet down, hell will begin to trepidate. We are hosting hostilities against the host of the enemy. In this final hour, make our hearts burn with love for the lost souls, for souls deceived, for souls distressed, and for souls undecided. The harvest is ripe and the reapers are ready. You are the Lord of the harvest and you have sent us. We will stand with you as reapers of the harvest. Our generation hears clearly the whispers of God in the past generations. We go all out, we go all in, we go all the way and always for the sake of the gospel. Nothing will be known amongst us except Christ and Him crucified. We will be spotless until the appearing of the Lord Jesus in glory. We declare, we declare that the finished works of Christ will go viral in our time. Salvation will go viral. Righteousness will go viral. Holiness will go viral. Truth will go viral. Justice will go viral. Holiness go viral. Consecration will go viral. The government of Christ will go viral. Now go up to the Lord with a shout. Is that your best a shout? Let the bride undefiled a shout. Let the army of the Lord a shout. Let the finishing generation a shout. Hallelujah. Woo. Find a brother and a sister. Give them a high five and say congratulations. Congratulations on your induction. 
Congratulations on your ordination. Thank you, choir. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. I hope you really found someone to say congratulations. Did you do it with all your heart? What a glorious army. What an indefatigable army. What an army in powerful procession. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be God. Right where you're seated, do you want to pray in the spirit just for a few minutes? Right where you're seated. La Kura Sevradu Shatande. Ella Dabaradu Seflos Otijo La Kosa Bande. Raskato Veveluzu Tani Karuze Veladabaha. Meno Zondila Kuria Zavradu Karabalebradu Kavi. Lord that the Kuraza niche on to Likura Zebelebaha. Mendo Kiza Vrado Satila Bahashte. Soldiers of Christ, do you want to pray in the spirit of Baruso Kala Viha? Nena Zutelega de Baluza Kraskebar. Neno Sivande, let's participate in this portals and pathways of the spirit resting upon us in this hour, resting upon this generation. Adokuria Zavrako Sate, Rekete Belegadu Zobadi, Rokovovovozila Kasha, Emandus Kopa, Raskatolokuja, and Abariaska. Can you add more intensity and more intentionality to that time of praying? Ebarakosi, Rakatali Balo, Redede Berusko Pa, Risuva, Iladu Dujena, Nizotokoto, Rike Veluski, Arupo Dus Minate, Rakata Balizo, Embregados, Potals are opening up, Mato Saba, Inda Kuriasa, the anointing over you is becoming dynamic, Eborokobe, Rusuvasa, your vision has been sharpened, Eborokotena, Rutuzuzusa, you are being kitted with your armory. Amano Koto, Radakabilaha, Reposuvra, Eloteliando, a new dimension of wisdom, Abaru Koba, Rikesovre, Letenekusa. The Spirit of the Living God is infiltrating you. You have capacity in the Holy Ghost. Ima Korusapa, Rebedos, Ingros Kataza, Ebregebalus. For those not praying, Makoriandos, Anekos, I declare grace. Your feet is firmly planted. Participate in this procession. You are being urged forward by the energy of the Spirit, the capacity of God to propel a man in the direction of destiny. We are here for a purpose, endowment and endowment, empowerment above enslavement and ensnarement Rokotosa, if there's any yoke, it is broken on this holy mountain, possess your possession Rakatosika there has been deliverance there has been holiness Roposoprakosa possess your possession Mateporusi Agrede Vlekusaba Ramanosa Iveve Koruzu Diasa Pulling your family, pulling your lineage into this dimension of the God life. Pulling your husband, pulling your wife, pulling your sons, pulling your daughters, both biologically and spiritually. Irada Balus Nekorus Kevragadis Rekaza Katusa Ali Barakis. We have a few more minutes. Mento Korus Kapala Dabaha Ebregadekadeke Beluka No Zuzuliato. Every yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. On the day you are restless, the yoke will be broken off your neck. Abelokosima to see the Lord clearly to discern his heart clearly receive your assignments blueprints have been re released blueprints in the spirit roadmaps in the spirit there's a next for you a next in ministry 
a next in family, a next in business, a next in career, a next in spirituality. There's a next for you in God. Makoto kuya, ragada barusa pa, eleberia komburiaso, mosopoka. Pray for your body. You are anointed to carry the mandate. Sickness will not be named among you. Radoso kope ni kuria liadusa, atoko pine diha, uregede bedis. Lord, we give you praise. Lado some brother Clofra Holmes. It's a brakiza prakatala badagadabaha. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you because this is such a precious moment. Thank you for this weighty capital of apostolic prophetic graces. Thank you for this righteous conveying, bringing us right into the very heart of our Father for this hour. Thank you for eyes that see, ears that hear, and hearts of understanding. Thank you for perfect discernment, perfect alignment, perfect assignments. Thank you, O oh God, for placing us exactly where you are calling us to be in this hour we thank you for prophetic precision causing us to understand your heart for the time we thank you for strength in the spirit we thank you for a rich endowment and a rich empowerment of eternal life thank you jesus for blueprints master plans and roadmaps thank you for ordering our steps in righteousness and leading us on this highway that we might execute your judgment in the nations of the earth. We bless you, Lord, for the opportunity to be vessels, voices, and visionaries of your kingdom agenda. Lord, we know that you have not anointed us for nothing. We know that our relationship with you has multi-dimensional implications. We reckon that the choice you have made in us as the army of the finish is to accomplish with you the part of the work that must be done urgently with the highest impact in the shortest possible time. We lean into the extraordinary provisions of covenant that we might partake and participate fully in the divine nature and begin to convert these dimensions and provisions of the spirit, these enrichments of the spirit, these currencies of the spirit to make a difference in our world and to, to elevate the knowledge of the glory of God just as waters cover the sea. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you because we have an understanding heart. Thank you for causing us to comprehend and thank you for aligning your army into formations that will not break rank. We'll take that which is ours and we'll run with it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I declare over you in the name of Jesus that your heart will burn afresh. I declare over you in the name of Jesus that you will carry a weighty consciousness of your next in God. In the name of Jesus, your eyes, the eyes of your spirit, will become illuminated with such weighty counsel that it will be speed to your own. In the name of Jesus, I declare you will be aligned in precision. You will operate such great dimensions of accuracy and acumen in the spirit that you will hit target for God. In fact, you will be a target that God hits and then you will hit target for God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, his word all through this camp meeting will not stand against you, but they will become witnesses of your yieldedness as a vessel unto the living God. Consecration will be easier and you will make a permanent, pres a permanent practice of the presence of God. The greatest success in your life will be your obedience and you will fulfill the divine calling over you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Amen and amen. If you intend to celebrate the Lord, do it with all your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please be seated in God's presence. The Lord bless you greatly. 
this has been such an enriching experience. And I was saying to PDK that, look, we have found where our August will be spent. And I think it's perfect that it happens within the summer, you know? So you can make out the time. And he was just really so excited and sends his love. Um, we love the body of Christ. And we know that God has called us to really steward his heart um, and to produce, you know, uh, a now word that he releases and to just share it in a way that saints can take ownership of the heart of the Father and run with it. And that's what he's been doing all through this conference. And we just honor the Lord for the gift of his vessels. Do you want to bless the Lord for every minister in songs, in the word? Thank God for all our pastors at God Life Assembly everywhere. We just honor and bless the Lord for giving us these great gifts. And can we specially celebrate mommy? She's here with us again this morning. Let's love on her. God bless you, mom. We celebrate you. We truly appreciate you. And we know that God will continue to strengthen you for the work he's put in your hands. Thank you, beloved siblings. Today, we want to continue uh, to just open up and excavate a bit more. It gives us insight to the multidimensional nature of the finish. And I, I feel like uh, from the point where I heard Pastor Chin talk, sort of giving us uh, a visionary articulation of what God is putting in his heart. What I caught was it's not just a word about the camp meeting. It's a word that will impact this dispensation. It's almost as though God put in our hands a prophetic blueprint to begin to prosecute and understand what he is doing in the now. And it means that you begin to regulate your private experiences with the Lord, your times of praying and fastings and studying of the word to, to go deeper in the things that God has said to us about the hour that we're in. And every single session we've had has added such flavor, such richness to what the Lord is showing us. So if indeed we are in the finish and we are, then the Lord is calling us to reckon with what manner of man and what manner of time that we're living in and how we can position ourselves to partner with the Lord Jesus Christ toward the finishing line. And he chose us. We've sort of explored those powerful insights around the fact that we didn't do anything to qualify for it. He made that election of grace and the way that we can demonstrate our gratitude is actually live our lives along, you know, um, uh, to live our lives in response to that election of grace. By the grace of God, I feel very strongly led to uh, speak around spiritual intelligence a bit more today. And I feel like, I believe that it's such an important conversation to have because there is a manner of people we ought to be. And sometimes as spiritual people, as people of faith, those who have, you know, become engrafted into a new life and a new civilization, we have a keen recognition of who we are in Christ Jesus in the sense of our identity in God, but we are often unable to fully translate that into the world that we live in. Hallelujah. What you have to reckon is that one of the key definers of the finishing generation is that they have a dexterity that can respond to the uniqueness of their time. We are in such a different dispensation. In fact, the time you were born into no longer exists. The generation you were born into, the dispensation you were born into, do you understand this? It no longer exists. And I know that by year 2020, we became keenly aware of disruptions, right? Because there was the COVID-19 pandemic and we saw the world order literally deconstructed before our eyes. Is that correct? But the truth is, that's not the first time where we have had thresholds and gates in the spirit opening us up to a new era. Every generation and every dispensation have always had their own deconstruction. 
So it's not a social economic construct. It's not something that happened because there was a health crisis and it impacted on how we communicate, how we relate, how we do business, how we transact in the workplace. It's, it's you know, the deconstruction is not merely about the utility of technology and how we can now work remotely and how there are more meetings on Zoom than there are in, you know, in halls and auditoriums. You may have all these physical coefficients as reminders of the deconstruction of the world order. You might have it in your workplace, have it in your business. You see it even in the way that Nigeria is constituted. We were seeing shifts in our political structure. Is that correct? This is the first time in our political history that there was the emergence of that which is called the thought force. What was the thought force? Peter Obi and the LUP movement was the thought force. It was the first time a literal nobody in the political landscape of Godfatherism could emerge on the, on the wave and the strength of the voice of the youth and become a contender to the establishment. And all of these political, socioeconomic, you know, systemic announcements of the deconstruction of the previous world order are actually triggered and powered from the the spirit look if you listen to me say anything today and you're not fully getting it and you're feeling like why are we talking Peter or B we're here for the spirit just be patient with me okay in the coming days you'll be able to take these arrows from your back pocket and you will fling it forth to hit target for God in Jesus name there's a powerful requirement to understand and that is the part of the message that the Lord has put in my heart. And in sharing it, sometimes I'm like a lone voice. <laughs> sometimes the burden is so heavy for the church to reckon that until our faith gets converted, we cannot attain the finish. You are already keenly aware about the requirement for maturity in the things of God. You know that your journey, your destination is Christ. That he is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So that you can mature into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. You know that as we behold him, we are becoming like him. Because as our faces are set as in a mirror, beholding the glory of God, we are being transformed into that very same image by the spirit of God. From one level of glory to the other. You know that you are a partaker of the divine nature. You know that you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. By the precious eternal promises that God has given to you. You have a reckoning of the promises. You have a reckoning of the, of the uh, prophecies. You have a reckoning of who you are in Christ. And you have a hunger and a thirst to become more like Jesus. You have a hunger and a thirst to walk in your blood but dominion over sin. You know that whatsoever is born of God indeed overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And you know that the world has the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Glory to God, you know these things. But do you also reckon that after you got born again, the reason you were kept on the earth is so that you are not only heaven bound, but you are relevant to convert the kingdoms of this world to the kingdoms of our God. Are you aware that there is a warfare that is ongoing and it's a warfare of kingdoms? Are you aware that you are an ambassador of a superior civilization? Are you aware that you are meant to impose heaven on earth? Except we buy into this message. Except we begin to ask ourselves, what is the educational coefficient of my spirituality? What will I do about broken policies in Africa? How will my business elevate prosperity and national GDP? How will I contribute my own quota to unemployment and unemployability? And you might be in a place in your life where you're like, Didike, I'm actually part of the unemployment uh, quota. Right now, I'm part of the statistic. But the goal is for you to start to experience an awakening in your heart. An army has a reason. 
a people who are not only strong on their priesthood, but who are strong on their kingship. Hallelujah. We carry what we experience on our altar and we use it to shape the thrones that we are called to occupy on the earth. Are you aware that there are kings, kings of spiritual thrones that are transacting with the blood of men? Hallelujah. Have you ever seen that in Revelations? That the woman sits on top of the mountains and she's negotiating with the kings of the earth. And the transactions are the souls of men, the blood of martyrs. He didn't make you priest and king after the order of Christ without a purpose. Look at this. Oh, thank you, Father. So, Jolie Kuras every day. Ambro do Zuvra Katija Blandos. Okay, I think it hasn't synced. In Luke, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus Christ said to the disciples the very same thing that he's saying to us. He said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. I am sending you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Hallelujah. I feel like saints get that harmlessness well. But that mastery and that dexterity, that sagacity, I'm not meaning to throw words around. I will break down to you what I'm seeking to show you. That, that ability to, to be undercover, that ability to take the heart of God that you receive in private koinonia and flip it into how you engage a boss that you know is sleeping with all the ladies in your office. And God says, don't go. I know there has been a message of flight in the church for the longest time. But it's not a balanced message. There's also the message of a fight. Where the saint stays and they say, not on my watch. And that doesn't only look like a dozy, free courier, zi blandos. After you menu, si courier, zi ledasha. You may need to go get a master's in microeconomic policy analysis so you can come back to your local government in jaws and declare the will of God. Amen and amen. He said you have to be wise like serpents. You have to be shrewd. And a lot of you, if you're like me, your sister, you possibly struggled with that parable. You remember the parable where um, a servant was being, you know, um, he was losing his job because he had really mismanaged that opportunity for service and that opportunity for leadership. And his master was displeased with him and was sacking him. And you remember how he went to those who owed the business. Remember? Ever struggled with that parable? Yeah. And he started to say, how much do you owe? 14,000 naira. Don't worry. I'll, you know, I'll cancel it for you. I'll write 2,000 naira. Just pay this. How much do you owe? 118,000. Why didn't you pay us all this time? Don't worry. I'll cancel it for you. You know, you owe 20,000 naira now. And the Bible says in Luke 16 that the master commended the unjust manager. Christ commended the shrewd manager. And I love how Amplified opens it up to us. It says, his master commended the unjust manager, not for his misdeeds, but because he had acted shrewdly by pre preparing for his future unemployment. For the sons of this age, the non-believers, are shrewder or wiser in relation to their own kind that is the ways of the secular world than the sons of light who shotobarakusia 
Amen and amen. There's a system of the world. The people of the world master the system of the world. They understand the intricacies of this realm. They play by the rules of this realm and they win. Do you understand this? He said he was commended because he prepared for his future unemployment. He wanted to buy favor. He was being transactional because he reckoned that he was living in a transactional world. He was sowing seeds so he could reap reciprocity in the coming days. Are we still together? Look at this. He said, the sons of this age, the non-believers, are shrewder, wiser, more strategic in relation to their own kind, their own system, the ways of the secular world than the sons of light. What this means is that, as I have found it, there are so many believers who study the word, who pray in the spirit, who love the Lord with all their heart, but cannot leverage their access points to the realms of God as a currency to get results for God. The way that I see it, my generation owes God. We owe God. There has been such a generous release of everything that can make you triumph as the church. There's a weighty revelation of scripturally sound and balanced doctrine there's heresy all over the place but there's a weighty abundant supply of true counsel the counsel of Christ there were dispensations before us that read from scrolls all they had were letters and they read it again and again and again and again today as I speak to you there are still places in the Middle East and Asia that meet in underground basements and they know they will be caught it's a matter of time when they are caught the consequences are grave many times leading to death but they continue to meet I work with a missionary agency that is constantly evolving strategies for importing Bibles into regions by passing Heavily gated brothers. Amen and amen. amen. They work with insiders within border control who are operating what Pastor Sarah was teaching us about law swallowing laws because it becomes a matter of does righteousness demand I be loyal to the government or I be loyal to the government of Christ? And then they exalt their loyalty to the government of Christ over and above their, their loyalty to a government against Christ. Guess what? When they are caught, because not if, when they are caught, the consequences are grave for being an insider working against the anti-kingdom agenda of that government. We are blessed we have the word of God. We have access to technology. We can sit without being held back. Pastor Sarah, where did you and Pastor Chintok go? That policeman came into the hall. Sir? North Cyprus. He wanted to take the gospel to North Cyprus. As the Lord had shown to him. Met with authorities. Seeking breakthrough access into that system. They had checked him out. They know he's a man of God. He's a gospel merchant. And they said to him, what would you want to come and do here? To deliver leadership development programs. And from start to finish of those initial sessions, was it not sounding like a professor? Doctoral excellence. Academic precision. Pragmatic infiltration. This is not English language. This is what you are called to. To go to a school to teach because the Lord said to you, 
Daughter, this is a headquarters of witchcraft operation in your local government. I'm sending you there on a two-year internship. Overthrow that system. Yes, sir. You register online, PGD in childhood development, you know, and early stage education. You meet the principal, you understudy the school. You bring forth a seven, a seven part agenda. These are the things your school needs. We will handle your knowledge transfer systems, teacher training, administrative re-engineering, mentoring systems, guidance and counseling for the children. We will even operate fundraising strategies that will get the attention of international donors. That is your language, but underneath, don't be deceived by my put together. I'm a rascal in the spirit. Your head between your knees, standing in the faith for nations. But you will not always get an opportunity to do a handshake and say, I'm born again, you are born again, hey, yeah. There are people that I meet in the course of my work. They are wizards. Guess what? I know them, they know me. You are shaking hands in boardrooms, a local rules of record, all ship and they. Underneath your bread, make a raise every katuzubaha. Le paria kuvenuse. If I catch you, you raise a motion. They want to refuse it. Is English, but no kuriz of less. Thank you so much, sir. Alaji, this has been such an insightful thought. But as you know, sir, based on even your own pedigree, these are definitive uh, strategic approaches we should take. It's something we've done in this organization and that organization. If I don't come with ped pedigree before men, there are rooms I can't enter. But really, I come in the name of the Lord. We have a need of this because it looks to me as of today that the saints who are willing to engage this priest-king dimension are in the minority. Stop glorying in the technology of your tongues. Where you are praying in tongues and you are feeling yourself. Okay, sir, you have roared like the lion. What can we see around us? Let's even start the internship from your family. You heard when the man of God was talking about atmospheres. Sometimes you condition an atmosphere against its will so that it doesn't stand against your destiny. But what are many believers doing? They just want to get married and run out. Because there's, you know, they're not even, they're not, they're not my level in our house. Because the things that God is showing me is here. Well done, my woman of depth, you are here. Why not bring us here too? I just want to marry the man of God. Let's go and face our destiny. What's the collateral impact of your life on your brother? Who is still dealing with a drug addiction? How we go do this thing? We played and slept for too long. There are territories to take. I run a coaching practice by the grace of God. I've done that for nine years. We're going to be 10 next year. And as of today, we have a tech-driven community of about 75,000 people who belong to that coaching community. Do you know what that means? That's captive audience for the amplification of the superior mindsets of our kingdom. I know it from scripture. And then I use kingship and dexterity to convert the mysteries and the mindsets of kingdom into coaching coefficients. So you'll be hearing us talk about uh, how to accelerate peak performance, visionary excellence, innovation prowess, legacy leadership. <laughs> Underneath it's pure Jesus on code. On code. You know why? Deliverance is preached. 
Sometimes we mention Jesus, sometimes we do not. What you have to reckon is that you can mention Jesus in the absence of the Spirit of Christ. <laughs> and you can refrain from mentioning Jesus in the presence of the Spirit of Christ, which is more impactful. Happens again and again. Organizations pay me thousands of dollars to come and speak to them. Let me tell you what happens. I get there. I'm speaking English. I'm speaking frameworks, coaching frameworks, how to transform your human capital, strength-based approach to elevating, you know, staff productivity, leadership development, right? Again and again, what happens is people begin to cry. They come, yeah, you guys here with me. They come under such a weight of the anointing. They will be crying. I will, say, I will be saying to myself that you have just started. You that after you leave here, you will still be hearing my voice. In fact, many times the transitions are so vivid when they happen. I enter the room. The older ones have a look as though, what are you going to tell me? I've been doing this for 45 years. I sit on boards and I consult for boards of organizations. And I'm telling you before the living God that many of the solutions that organizations are blowing the trumpets about and saying, oh my God, you are so brilliant. Many of the clear answers, they came from the presence of God. Vividly. Do it this way. Work on this. Tinker this. Leave operations. Focus on logistics specifically. Handle their sales and marketing. Shift this person. I've seen people who are infested with demons and holding back the profitability of businesses. Oh, yes. Where nothing is working, they are losing sales, revenue is dipping, they are even getting into trouble. You know, by an example very recently. Okay, I can't give that example. It's too close home. <laughs> But anyway, something was really going wrong. Really going wrong in an organization. Ah. And as I started to pray, ah, ah. I'm like, ah, ah, you are a key man in this business, but you're a practicing witch. You know, we, and we claim that we're spiritual, but many times we're so insensitive. You know, everybody's in church. I hope you know. I hope you are aware that Christianity is not like a national religion. Aside Muslims who are in Islam, and look, this is where I am, this is my heritage, I was born into this, not yet captured, but on the way to. But because a person says they are, please, I beg you, Christian. It's a loosely used social word. It's just a social delineator. I'm not a Muslim, therefore I'm a Christian. Someone that she has tracked and she's sitting on boiling pots. I'm talking about to the point of a loss of life. That was when I became more awakened that no, this is even beyond money now. How does your rider die? What's going on here? Mm -hmm. But you have to have language. Say, I have language. Holy Spirit, help me. Now, let me spend the rest of my time here, I want to show you five things that can transform your spiritual intelligence. Do you desire spiritual intelligence? You want to be shrewd. Do you want to be shrewd? Do you want to be wise? Do you want to be an undercover agent? Amen and amen. He said, I am sending you. This is so powerful. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. And you have to be shrewd as snakes and innocent as dove. To be shrewd is to show sharp powers of judgment. To be astute. To be brilliant. You know, is, is to have in the world, they call it street credibility. In the kingdom is to have spirit cred. To be discerning. To, to have capacity for conversion. To know how to language the mysteries of eternal life to a woke generation. Hallelujah. 75,000 people 
that God has given you direct access to their hearts. Do, do you get what I'm saying to you in the name of Jesus? So people read my free books. I'll release coaching resources for free. And they'll be like, DDK is so generous. I belong to a superior system. I am on an infiltration mission. I have resources that have been downloaded almost 200,000 times. And you think that I will only reckon myself as a gift on a pulpit? There are platforms God wants to give to you in your own industry. This is my core. But from my core, I must reverberate for my Christ to the ends of the earth. And guess what? Let's quickly go there. If you think being a marketplace apostle, how many of you are called that way? You are a marketplace apostle and you know it. Wave well. You know that God is sending you into the marketplace. You know that, that you have an assignment in government. You know you have work to do in fashion. You know that you are a business mogul by the spirit. You know that. You know you are a thought leader. You know God is writing books through you and you know you are a consultant. You know you, you carry an anointing for entertainment. Where are you? Aha. If you have a mountain where God is sending you to, listen. The marketplace apostle is not a brilliant person with expertise, fine sounding English. Who is featherweight in the spirit. If you are featherweight in the spirit and you engage the marketplace, that person can be a casualty. I'm telling you, a marketplace apostle is twice the apostle. Oh, you didn't hear me. It is to, let me say it this way. Let's say a call to policy. Do you know Obias Ekwesili? Let me know if you know Obias Ekwesili. By the way, that's a woman right out of the womb of the spirit for Africa. You have to know your foreigners. So, if you know Obias Ekwesili, this would be a perfect example. To be a marketplace apostle in government will be to be Chintok great in the spirit and Obias Ekwesili great in, in government. Do you get it? You will pray and study the word like Pastor Chintok. As he does all you will do with your life. By the way, thankfully, I gave you his example. Despite all that weighty anointing, he didn't call Jesus from beginning to end in North Cyprus. But the policemen came to him after. They're like, I've never heard a speech like this. He called it a speech, but it was Jesus who unlocked his understanding. You see this. When you are clear about your divine mission, angels are happy. Because angels have those conversations. How far? I've been busy. Oh. This is my saint that I'm working with. In fact, if you say I was one holding plane like this because her mission when she was going to Singapore, heavyweight, all the demons on the earth, I held it, we delivered it. No more. Then another angel is answering that, are you serious? My saints, we've been sitting, oh, I'm begging her, she's sleeping, not much to do. In fact, I was even trying to help her kill mosquito, then she was angry at God, that God, why am I living in this house? Then it's like, what? My own saint, our last oppression, men, I respected God in her. We entered that territory like this, see how she was marking it for the kingdom. She made it a no evil territory. Do you know by heavenly statistics we dropped crime rate by 49% in nine months because of her? The angel is like, what? My own angel, she even still fought her husband last night. Too. I was trying to put shoulder, calm her down, touch her shoulder. She was jacking me away. Our work is cut out for us. And some of us we know that the anointing on our lives makes us in high demand for kingdom mission. I have negotiated myself out of petty gossips. I've negotiated myself out of the greed of money. I've negotiated myself out of time-wasting Netflix blinges so that I can devote my affection 
and my attention to the work of my father. Is that you? That's the finishing army. As us, by every and any possible means, Jesus Christ must be glorified. And when I'm praying overnight and fasting, putting my body under, it's not because I want God to bless me. And it's not because I want to preach a powerful message. It's because I want the sound of my steps to reverberate as a sound of armies. Because actually we are not plenty. So God is actually adding strength to those who stand to be counted. Strength is multiplied to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your movements will be as the sound of mighty armies. You are supernaturally enabled to carry this outpouring of power into your sphere of influence. In the name of Jesus Christ, I've seen the power of God again and again in ways that are untraditional, but are, that are required for a generation. And by the grace of God, I've also seen the power of God in dimensions that everyday saints are fascinated by. Fibroids dematerializing blind in one eye for many years, open and seeing, tumors pulverizing, medical reports that are astonishing. I've even seen the power of God on my own body and my life. But I've also seen the power of God cause me to write a 400-paged book and publish it in three weeks. Is that correct? We need that dimension too. I've seen the power of God give me language to make presentations to covert government committees that ended the oncoming scourge of the LGBTQI agenda. Where under the influence of the Holy Spirit is, I'm speaking English, I'm speaking political reformation language, but they come under such a weight of the anointing, they start to fight themselves. Where's the man of God who shared that with me? Oh, he's, he's not in today. One of the pastors from TPH. He's called a draconian lawyer. Handles the toughest battles. They said if anything is bad, bring it. If there's gross injustice, bring it. And when he shows up, lawyers begin to fight themselves. I mean, uh, the judge, judges begin to fight themselves. Don't never. We are not taking that. They start to, they hit their heads together. They give him his judgment. He goes his way. Good judgment. He said all the time. Not once, not time, times, not... Again and again. Again and again. I said, that's my brother. This is our destiny in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I've seen the power of God. Put a word in my spirit for women. And he said, this God movement. They were like, I need you to language it. In a way that will not exclude those who have church wounds. You have to reckon that there's a harvest. And there are many saints who have been offended by church. They are the fringes. Their hearts still burn for God. But the moment you are sounding deep and spiritual, they're just like, I'm not doing that thing with you guys. Because saints in the past, not anymore in Jesus' name, made themselves borrowed vessels in the hands of the enemy. And so right in the church, because of carnality that people refuse to outgrow, they wound others, including spiritual leaders, but not anymore. Say not anymore. Say not anymore. So he shows me that movement, a God movement. It says, he started talking to me about it in 2019. And those who are my friends, sisters, siblings, prodigies, spent 2020 and 2021 sending me pictures and clips of newspapers every day as prophecy was being fulfilled. 
2019, I, I, I announced a radical rise of women into unprecedented positions of influence, of leadership, of generational impact across all spheres of influence. And I started to break down the protocols that will make women qualify for what the Lord was doing. So he called it, he called her the future forward female. And when we opened up that, you know, that arena and that construct, as I will call it, and started to invite women to come on board, I saw the power of God releasing an army of almost 40,000 women in two weeks into that community. Do you understand this? Without a marketing budget, I have a keen understanding of the weight of God's glory on my brand. I'm not that nice. There's nothing about me. But every nation I've gotten the opportunity to enter. I've seen angels open doors. And God is doing that. When we get ready for kingship, one of the things that starts to happen is God allocates weight to your brand. He's doing that. And he get why. I declare that the weight of God's glory is allocated to your brand. In the name of the Lord Jesus, become a recipient of angelic announcement, prophetic publicity. I declare that God will be your, it will be your media door opener. He will announce you in the quarters that matter so you can negotiate the destiny of others in the name of Jesus Christ. Have wisdom, sharp powers of judgment, practical intelligence that empowers you to judge situations accurately and turn them to your own advantage, in our case, for the advantage of the kingdom. I'll not be able to go fully in some of the things I want to show you, but I must highlight a few. You want to grow spiritual intelligence. Let me invite you to the first protocol. In, in, that, in that lifestyle of, of, of spiritual intelligence and opening up your prophetic pathways to be able to convert your priesthood to kingship. If it sounds like a big word, forgive me. I'm just, I'm just a words girl. But since we are here together, I get a chance to break it down. Is that correct? The first is spiritual archaeology. Say archaeology. What's archaeology about? History, excavating the historicals. You want to walk with the Lord. You want to understand his heart. You want to give language to what he is doing. You start where Apostle Ayuba started with us. When he said the work of the Father is in a continuum. So grow spiritual intelligence. You have to understand your heritage. You have to understand your origin. I told you on Thursday that what you believe about God is about the most important thing concerning you. Is that correct? Your perception of God and this heritage, this civilization, this system is critical to being able to do what is next for him in your own time. If you don't know where we are coming from, you can't discern accurately where we are going. Because it didn't start with us. Spiritual archaeology. You intentionally begin to make a practice of excavating the historicals of our heritage. What has God done in the church? You think you need to be a preacher for you to go back to God's generals and actually sit. You need an emboldenment that comes from what God has done. When you go to God's generals, I challenge you to look with new eyes and begin to observe that these generals were not only in revival that was spiritual. They were in a revival that had economic implications, political implications, 
intellectual implications. Revivals hit some city in the days of the Azusa revival that actually people were unable to, to perpetuate crime. Policemen were rendered useless in some communities because there was such a weight of God's glory they couldn't steal and they couldn't rape. Mm. Spiritual archaeology. Practice this one. Remember where we are coming from. You remember that scripture. The, the master commended the unjust manager. Why? He said because the sons of this age, they are shrewd and strategic concerning their own kind, their own system. But sins are not. Jesus said it, I didn't. He said the way you know it, before that uh, amplified version, the sons uh, of, of this world are in their generation wiser than the sons of light. What he was saying is the, the, the non-believers have a keen understanding of the world they live in and they know how to negotiate in that realm. But saints don't have a keen understanding of their own civilization. That's why we're still behaving like men. men. When I'm walking on any stage, whether to minister, to speak on global platforms, to consult on policy, anything. In my mind, I can see Deborah. Do you know, I can just perceive her. You know, she, na, na, so they do, and we just roll. I can see Joseph. So when, when I'm engaging in policy blueprints, I see Joseph. I didn't start it. There are those who have gone ahead of me. Amen. When I'm coaching, I see Joshebet. I see strategic thinking that takes you to the palace. And you are funded by the, the means of enemy territories. Do you see this? Spiritual archaeology. Spiritual archaeology. Who so, so good? Jesus, when he came to Galilee in Matthew 3... John tried to prevent him from the baptism and he said, permit it to be so for now, for thus it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. In Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one tittle will by any means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. He had an understanding of what was before he came. He had an understanding of the prophetic history that he came to fulfill. He had an understanding of the timeline of God's perfect purposes on human's history. This thing did not start with us. How will you not know what God has done before you? What's the nature of revival in Africa? I traveled and went with a weighty seed to see a foreigner in the southwest sat on the floor at good Amala and he started to speak to me from the 1940s the things that the Lord had done I was in awe I said so why are they not in books Baba kilo data quarter documented mm -hmm. took a good seed enjoyed myself i was emboldened in the faith i was like i belong to a quality heritage yeah spiritual archaeology can i add this by divine instruction some of you belong to a natural lineage that is also your prophetic lineage my grandmother just went home to be with the lord and in my last conversation with her, for almost an hour, I perceived her transitioning and I received mantles. I'm telling you, that is the prophetic stream I came from. I spent my years as a two-year-old, three-year-old at every prayer watch while she lived with us. When she rings the bell, I'll run to her room. Of course, there'll be boiled granite after or corn, 
but I will run to her room. As I grew older, we'll pray together every watch. That's why I still read my Bible in Yoruba many times. And when you encounter things like Jesu Lalari no Majemuto Suparagabasa. When, when you see a scripture like to lay hold on, press to lay hold on. Can, can that, in my, when I say press to lay hold, and I say can you know Amen and amen. Every time I'll be trying to be a global citizen, I'll say, no, 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 I don't speak Yoruba, but he must enter. Have a heritage. Your parents weren't wealthy, but you saw them steward the word of God. And you want to throw that away so you can just travel to UK for your masters and move on with your life. No! Spiritual archiving. You practice spiritual archaeology, your intelligence will grow. Your spiritual intelligence will grow. Your sagacity will grow. Your wisdom will grow. You will just know more about who we are. Because there's a manner of man. Spiritual archiving. Archiving is about how you store up in accurate format information. Is that correct? So that you can securely store them for long periods of time. I had the privilege to access some documents of the German army from many, many, many dispensations ago. And I was just like, the military mirrors the kingdom a lot. A lot. Anyway, Jesus said in Hebrews 10, verse 5, this was uh, a telling of his heart and his prayer he said therefore when he came into the world he said sacrifice an offering you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me in bond offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure behold I said I have come in the volume of book it is written of me to do your will O God so God practices journaling God has books where he has noted the journey of our lives. As we begin to walk with him, we must make a practice of aggregating our journey with him. Journaling is not a fad and it's not something that some of us like doing or some of us don't like doing. Testify with me if you have ever been through a difficult season and what pulled you out was what God said to you before. Yes! 100%. I go to retreats with bags. And if you open them, it's journals that are there. I share with KGA. Journals from as far back as 2001. I have them. Yes. You hear Bishop Oedepo say something like, 4.20 p.m. October 13, 1971. God said to me, how can you fulfill a word you don't even remember? How can you partner with God for the accomplishment of an assignment that you don't remember? Oh, because you think God said it. I believe in the Lord. No, he didn't say it to it. No. God said it. I believe it. I stay there. I prophesy it. I partner with him. I insist on his word. Have we not had things we stewarded for a decade in our lives? You go back, Lord, you said this. Lord, you said this. Over Africa, you said this. Over my marriage, you said this. Spiritual archiving. Start to document your walk with the Lord. Write the vision, make it plain. Start to hold and freeze in time. The encounters you have with the Lord. I want to teach you something in spiritual archiving that will bless your life. Especially those of you who are called to convert this eternal life and to give it expression in the realms of 
Never ever again write your bio or work on your website or create sales copy for your products without at all copra copy landing. Spend time. Don't write that next proposal without spending time with the Lord. Because when it comes to spiritual archiving, I'm not only teaching you to lay hold and to seize the heart of the Father and stirrings you come into in encounters with him and document them, keep them and go back to them. I'm also saying that every outflow, every written outflow of your business, your career, your work, your engagement on media, let it be a coded languaging of your prophetic identity. Do you understand this? Some of you are going to rewrite your bio by the spirit and it's going to be a door opener. You think you need to leave Joss or Gombe or Sokoto or Kaduna or Kano. No! When it comes to angelic publicity, when you stay where God plants you, he beats parts for the nations to come to you. We are not prosperous because we live in a place. We are prosperous because we live in a place. When you get it, say Selah. Because in him we move. In him we live. In him we have our being. Take me anywhere that God sends me. If it's a patched ground, I become water. Amen and amen. amen. So as you, anywhere, La Corrize Vrendo Shabbat. I love it. She took it. I'll stop at this third one because I sense so strongly. It will be a blessing to you. You want to grow spiritual intelligence? I want, I want to make a contribution to what the Lord has taught us um, concerning patterns. Who is the pattern son? It's Jesus Christ. He's our model and our perfect example. I want to put a layer on it by the grace of God according to scripture. The third thing I will leave you with when it comes to growing your spiritual intelligence and becoming shrewd and dexterous in navigating priesthoods and kingship is spiritual archetypes. Archetypes are simply designs and we come in archetypes, I promise you. Jesus Christ is the pattern son and our perfect example. We are sent standing on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. What this means is that there are systems of intelligence for producing the fullness of God's holy agenda on the earth that he housed in people that went before us. Because he's not a talkative, and there are strategies and tools we need today that he established in Elijah. This is what I mean by archetypes. Jesus Christ is a perfect example, and he has hidden in mortal men who went before us systems of intelligence for engaging the culture of the day. Nehemiah was a system for builders, influencers, those who have an anointing for administration, execution mastery, who get into a place and make things work. Elijah was a system for those who will confront Babylonian systems Babylonian infrastructure, especially within political warfare systems. Amen and amen. Joseph was a system of intelligence in God for converting the prophetic into policies that elevate the quality of life for humanity. Amen and amen. David was a system of intelligence for converting paupers to powerhouses. Men come in broke, broken and disgusted. On the other side, they become an army for the Lord. 
Some of you think people just gravitate in your direction. And you even be saying, hey, it's when they need me, they'll be calling me. Always crying. But you are a razor of men. Anyone wants to confirm that in the study of the word, you have found yourself gravitating sometimes toward the story and the life of some patriarchs or matriarchs of scripture. If that has happened to you, I challenge you to go and begin to study them more. You might find an archetype you can convert for our time and our dispensation. I connect to Deborah so much. And of all the great things about her, what fascinates me the most, that many people may not know, is that Deborah... Uh, was a political negotiator, she was a judge, a wife, a mentor to, uh, to generals. Do you know she was also a poet? She was a songwriter, a worship leader. So when anyone looks at me and wonders, is this not too much? You are this and that and that, I'm typically just like, I just they do my thing, I did my day. This is how I'm anointed. Amen and amen. You would uncover your prophetic prototype. You would discover forerunners who have gone ahead of you. You would experience divine strategy on the account of the supernatural. You will see the people through whom God has uncovered an answer that you can replicate in your generation. My final words to you is that there are women here. God is asking you stay here and build these sons and daughters for me. You're looking on social media and you're seeing your friend. She has done a PhD and she has just been awarded by something, something foundation. The Lord is asking me to remind you of Jael. There's such an archetype. Hallelujah. There's such an archetype. Hallelujah. This is not about trying to advance ourselves. This is about staying where he places us so that he can advance his kingdom agenda. Do you want to rise this afternoon and give God praise? And take a moment to just declare, Lord, do with me that which you have ordained. Do with me that which you have ordained. Open my eyes to see and give me understanding. And we thank him for it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you for listening. We are sure you have been tremendously blessed. To connect with Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance, please visit our website, www.kingdomleadersglobal.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance, for our video resources. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Kingdom Leaders Global. God bless you.